India has its own satellite navigation system and you can now access it on iPhone. The navigation with Indian constellation, also known as Navic, 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 or whichever way you'd like to call it, is a satellite navigation system which is similar to GPS or the global positioning system developed by the US. India's own NAVIC is developed by ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization. The Indian government is now considering it making mandatory for smartphones that are launched in the country. Now, according to Minister of State for Electronics and IT, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, all 5G phones should now support NAVIC by 1st of January 2025 and all the other smartphones by December of 2025. The government is planning to mandate chips embedded with Navic for automotive industry. Now, a cord software system, a local startup has incorporated Navic in the design of its integrated circuit in a very first attempt to do so by an Indian company. We are going to be speaking to the chief executive officer of Navic, but let me quickly get my colleague uh, Krishna Kumar to come and join us for that very important story. Krishna, you know, this is huge, and we've been looking at all these developments for the past couple of days now, since Friday to be particular. We were hoping to discuss the story and to discuss none other than Murli Krishna as Chief Executive Officer of Accord Softwares and Systems joining us on the show. Murli, thanks very much for taking time out. I think my first question to you would be how significant is this? We are talking about competing with the likes of Russia, Japan and the US when it comes to our own global positioning systems. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, See, it's a very significant uh, step, uh, mainly because uh, for uh, too long we were depending on uh, the US GPS satellite constellation for our own navigation. And uh, not only for uh, military purpose, even some uh, critical commercial segments require our own uh, satellite constellation system. There are uh, infrastructures which require very precise time, wherein any error in this time can cause uh, havoc. See, for example, uh, power grid stations, you have uh, things like uh, stock market uh, timings, then uh, base station timings. All these things depend a lot on uh, accuracy of uh, uh, timing that is okay. obtained from GP. In, in case, let us say, it gets degraded by with intention or without intention, it can create havoc. So having our own navigation system was very critical and... Uh, uh, really, I think uh, big thanks to ISRO for uh, launching these satellites and maintaining this infrastructure so that I think uh, companies like us are ready to uh, let us say, go to the user and uh, give the benefits of Navic. All right. And, and, you know, perhaps my next question that automatically flows uh, and I think everybody who would be watching us would be thinking how accurate is Navic when compared to, let's say, GPS. I read somewhere this afternoon that uh, a GPS will give you approximately five uh, meters of, uh, you know, accuracy. Uh, Navic will give you three meters accuracy. Are we saying that this is a better, a better perhaps technology when it comes to navigating on Indian roads? Uh, are we lo looking to compete now with GPS and perhaps outdo them? <laughs> Especially because Google Maps, you know, you know how we get confused on Indian roads with Google right. Maps sometimes because it hasn't, you know, charted out our roads all that well. Can Navic do that better? Yeah, I think I think it, it, it's a sort of uh, uh, a question which cannot be answered in uh, uh, one sentence because accuracy of uh, any navigation system depends on several factors. Uh, one of them is signal strength. See, if you have better signal strength from uh, satellites, you'll get better accuracy. Another uh, factor is uh, generally the signals go through what is called as ionosphere. So if the ionosphere is not modeled properly, then uh, you may not get better accuracy. And third thing is number of satellites. If you have more number of satellites in space, you are likely to get a better accuracy. So considering all these three things, Navic, what we have seen is gives better signal strength than GPS right now for whatever the design that has been made. Second thing is, I think uh, we are able to model the ionosphere in a better way than uh, 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 other uh, systems. But the third thing is number of satellites. So if you have more number of satellites, around India, then we are likely to get uh, much better accuracy than a GPS. So 
uh, I, I will not say that it is much better than GPS, but it is likely to give better than GPS when full constellation is in place. So if you have 11 or 7 or 11 satellites that ISRO is planning, when we have those many number of satellites, you are likely to get much better accuracy than GPS. Like from what I understand, I think, uh, Shweta, ISRO is planning to up the number of satellites Absolutely. for NAVIC from 7 to 12, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, another thing, you know, I'd like to remind viewers at the stage is what happened during the Kargil War when the Indian government wanted to use GPS, uh, you know, in that, uh, you know, all-important battle uh, uh, that was unfolding. And we weren't given access at that stage. So we lost strategic advantage because mm -hmm. of a particular piece of technology not offered to us. So it was about time that we developed our, our own for our own strategic interests and our own security interests to have our own global positioning systems. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, one is, of course, uh, you know, competing it, uh, uh, added as a, as a, as a product uh, in, uh, in, in economic terms, but also the strategic and security Absolutely. importance uh, to this, uh, to right. us having our own GPS. Absolutely, to us having our own indigenously developed in, exactly, yeah. positioning system. Uh, Muli, uh, I understand that there's going to be multi-usage to this. One is going to be commercial, which is for the rest of us, the, us, the common and one is going to be strategic, which is for the government, perhaps for more discrete purposes. I, is that the only right. utilization? What is the what is the bandwidth we are talking about as far as utilization of Navik is concerned? Yeah, I think when you look at the commercial space itself, I think uh, the market is huge. I think uh, nowadays uh, everyone depends on uh, GPS. And as I was uh, mentioning, I think uh, when we look at uh, critical infrastructure, even though it's a commercial operation, need of a uh, let us say self-reliant navigation system was a must i think uh, with navic it has been fulfilled and uh, as krishna was saying i think in case of uh, 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 military systems it's a must to have our own navigation system uh, because uh, uh, commercial systems are uh, likely to be mimicked by some enemy so it is uh, very much required that we have military code uh, being transmitted for our military systems. And uh, this gives a very secure uh, positioning to our uh, defense personalities. Okay. Right. Well, another thing, uh, Shweta, while we're discussing this, uh, is also I wanted to remind viewers that the talk of Navic essentially you know, began with the launch of, interestingly, the iPhone 15. That is because correct. Because the iPhone 15, the latest version of iPhone, mm. iPhone the latest generation of iPhones, have as arrived Navic. with Navic uh, you know, uh, uh, as, an, as an option for you. So that's when the talk began. And then Absolutely. soon enough, you saw uh, you know, uh, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, uh, Minister of State for IT, mm -hmm. also to, uh, chipping in uh, with the talk of how it needs to be made compulsory and then officially came the, the, the final confirmation that it will be made co compulsory mm -hmm. for all phones by uh, December 2025 and uh, before that by January 2025 for, for all 5G phones mm -hmm. that are going to be manufactured. So interestingly, it's the launch of iPhones that began talk of Navic, which has now taken us to another uh, plane of understanding what having our own uh, global positioning system is. Absolutely. But uh, what is interesting is that you know, we are now competing with US Russia, Japan. the European Union, and Japan, and China. Mm -hmm. So we have yeah. five competitors, and only Japan's GPS, or Japan's global positioning system, has lesser number of satellites as compared to us. Everybody else has more satellites, da as da da don't they? Absolutely, and and that, that brings yeah. me to all the more important question, Murli. If it's not as accurate, and it's not as widely popular as a GPS would be, does it make economic sense to compel smartphone makers to have Navic pre-installed? Does this mean that the cost of smartphones is likely to go up? What is going to be the immediate repercussion of this? Is this going to be, uh, you know, the cost remains same? There is there is nothing to lose, nothing to gain, perhaps an Indian system at, at no added cost? Or does this mean the cost of making smartphones now go up? Yeah, uh, one uh, thing that I want to address is, uh, no, Navic will be as accurate as GPS. So I don't think uh, there will be any degradation in the accuracy of uh, Navic when we have full uh, constellation in uh, uh, place. Uh, the second question is, uh, see, like, uh, uh, for uh, historical reasons, uh, we got, uh, in the sense, uh, ISRO got two lights, uh, two frequency bands for operating Navic, one at L5 frequency, another one at S frequency. See, traditionally, GPS uses L1 frequency, which is at 1.5 gigahertz. So most of the smartphones were built around this 1.5 gigahertz uh, uh, frequency. 
Now, if somebody has to change the frequency to 1.1, uh, uh, let us say, gigahertz, which is uh, uh, L5 frequency, they had to invest a little bit on uh, hardware. Uh, so in a way, yes, it used to add a little bit of cost to the uh, smartphone when they incorporated Navik. But the good news is uh, ISRO, uh, the recent uh, satellite that uh, they are launching, it incorporates signal in uh, L1 uh, band, which is at 1.5 gigahertz, which is at the same frequency as GPS. So what is going to happen is in future, when more and more number of uh, ISRO satellites will have L1 frequency, they need not add any additional hardware in a smartphone to make it Navic compatible. So there is no additional cost as far as uh, Navic is concerned when we go into future. Right, Mr. Murli Krishna, also, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Qualcomm and MediaTek chips already have been uh, having coming uh, with uh, Navic, uh, you know, with Navic compatibility already, aren't they? So the transition should not yes. be that, that all that difficult. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, definitely. I think a lot of uh, uh, modem manufacturers uh, will have, uh, let us say, GPS incorporated in their modem, and the latest uh, modems from many of these big players like Qualcomm and others have Navic built in. So that way, I think the transition has already been made. And uh, I assume that uh, over the years, with L1 in uh, Navic uh, satellites, I think uh, it is uh, much more smoother. All right, much more smoother, perhaps right. even as competitive as GPS. Murli Singh once, all satellites are going to be in place. There's not going to be any added cost to it. And it's going to be in maybe more accurate than GPL. We'll have to wait and watch for that. Time will tell. But Murli, thanks so much for joining in. Thank you for sharing your insights. And all the very best. I, I see you have a huge contract to oblige at this point. <laughs> all the very best for what's to come. We'll touch base once again. And congratulations again. Sure. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, bye.